Welcome, uh, everyone, and to this broadcast, this special broadcast. It's my pleasure and honor to be with you. My name is Nikkei Roach, fellow marketers, service members, veterans, dads, moms, and everybody in between. I'm glad and honored to see you today to be able to, to learn and glean from a, an, an amazing individual who has a large and broad area of area to cover from being the sergeant major and one of the in sergeant major for those of you who have no idea just think of somebody who's in charge of the toughest school in the world for military personnel working on strategy logistics um personnel and really being able to hone the the war fighter and also to work with civilian personnel but also how to be able to use innovation come up with creative mindsets so that your business or your family can be empowered to be inspired and to go further or if you're you happen to be a student you're a law student a medical student how to be able to retain information faster how to read faster and how to actually leapfrog over your competition in a quick and a fast way method. So thank you for being here. My guest today is none other than retired Command Sergeant Major Robert Bob Burton. Hey, hey Nick, really a pleasure. And folks out there, again, thank you for spending time. Uh, value your time. Uh, I hope I can add some value to you and help you in your your learning struggle. But you can achieve more time, and that's that's really the goal. I think that's why why we all come. Uh, to learn from one another. So look forward to learning from you and learning to share uh, some some things that I've learned um, in accelerated learning uh, in order to reach peak potential cognitively. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Bob. So we're going to tackle right in. So in, in let's say in, in 60 seconds or less, speaking of speed, who is Bob Burton? Well, Bob Burton is now retired. Uh, retired out of the Army 30 years, which was great, most of it in special operations. Got to be with some of the toughest men and women uh, in our country. I really enjoyed the time uh, from small uptown, uh, small state, uh, small town in upstate New York, and uh, we settled here in Northern Rock because uh, the education is is fantastic. So looking at how do we generation generation, it's they're the center, they're the ones that move. They're the future leaders of this nation, and we settled in here uh, to continue that legacy. Thank you very much. And also thank you for your service. And we're going to go into some very specific questions for some of you. Um, and we cover a broad spectrum. And that's intentional because there are different areas and different portions that Bob speaks to. So grab your pen and paper, turn off your distractions, because we're going to address that too, to be able to, you know, to tackle some some funny but also um, some very specific and strategic objectives so that when you finish this broadcast, you can take that and make it actionable. So we're going to move into the second phase, which is, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges in your area, Bob, of expertise? Well, my area of expertise now is uh, since I just got out of the military, made that transition. So if you've made that transition, you know the pain, you know the struggle, you also know the difference. If you haven't made that transition yet, be prepared. I was fortunate where I was able to finish and utilize the Army's tuition assistance program, a master's degree, uh, this year. I highly recommend education. You've got the mind. The mind is never going to a normal configuration. So you do that through learning new critical thinking, new tools, new areas that you can apply in life and the way the world is changing now learning is a required superpower it's not optional anymore so learning is a superpower tell us a little bit more about that why is it's in more specific you know why is learning now the superpower versus just studying history and and, and stuff that you do for rote why is it and talk us through that learning process that you've now mastered and actually are teaching others how to do Absolutely. Uh, you say, so why is it important? Because there's more information produced today in, in less than six months that was produced entirely before the year 1800. And information is doubling at an astronomical rate. How can you tell the difference between what is true, what is not true? You've got to cross-reference. Do your sources. Do your research. Yes, use the Internet. It's a tremendous tool. Actually, read books. Process information. Um, and the ability to do that at a high rate is the, going to be the differentiating factor between successful people and unsuccessful people. I'd like to tell you just a couple of anecdotes on that. Uh, 
Bill Gates, for example, he stated, if I had one superpower, it would be the ability to read fast or read faster. I might also say that Warren Buffett reads in upwards to four to six hours per day. I challenge, are they successful? Do they read because they're successful or are they successful because they read? I believe the latter. They are successful because they read. The learning cycle starts with having the right Actually, you start with a problem. What is your problem? What are you trying to achieve? Is it a scientific problem? Is it an engineering problem? Is it an English paper you have to write? So you set out to solve a problem, clearly define the problem, and then seek information to solve the problem. The more information you have, the better your solution is going to be. My problem was, this actually was about a year ago, is my reading wasn't where it needed to be. My learning wasn't where it needed to be. And my graduate uh, GPA was reflecting that. So I'm just telling you, in a short amount of time, you can achieve tremendous results. Here's what I did. If I could share this anecdote quick. I reached out to Howard Berg. He's the world's fastest reader. And I got his program. I started going through speed reading. And I started going through accelerated learning. And then I actually asked Howard to be my mentor. And he agreed. He also came in and taught the, the special operations, special, the special forces soldiers at Fort Bragg. In their training pipeline that Nikkei mentioned, um, in order to enhance their cognitive ability, their process, and with an environment that's changing rapidly, with new stressors, new uh, things to consider, you, the mind must process at an accelerated rate in order to even survive on today's modern battlefield and all possible in today's business environment. And I, and I and I'm glad you put pointed out you, battlefield and business field. I mean, you can you can there's correlation between both of them. You have an objective that's to solve a problem for a, for a client or a customer or a patient, but also in the military, especially in special forces command, you have objective, you have regulation, you have rules, and you have different things to. But you have to do it, and you have to do it in the most effective and efficient way to get it done for lack of a better word, to take care of the nasties to protect our our <laughs> our republic. Um, how, how, t take us through like a quick, quick super lesson, because I, I remember you said like speed learning and, you, and you, you studied with your mentor. Give us a quick snap of how to increase and accelerate your reading capability. I'm glad you said it. You pointed out that you said something to do with you know, you can go on the internet, you can search it up on, and I think you said this before in another conversation, you can go on Google, but I think you really sort of said books, go back to reading books. Give us a quick snapshot of something to really speed up your reading tonight. Sure, sure. So this is this is interesting. I get excited when I go into a library. Now, some of you may not like books, and if that's you, that's okay for now. But you got to make a decision that um, I want to be better, and that's going to take effort. Uh, I had a Lean Six Sigma course that I was taking, and. I wanted to really learn everything I could about it. Matter of fact, that's called uh, front loading or saturating your brain. It's called brute force learning. It's a good thing. And what you're doing is, I, so here's, let me tell you the story. I went into the local library in base. I got about six books on Lean Six Sigma. They kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, there's ideas in these books. I can't wait to dig into them. One idea can change your life, can change your world. So I went and I got those books. I started with a series of questions. You asked me to sum up how you can accelerate and make a difference right away. Remember, we talked about problem solving. Problem, you have to define the problem. Step number one in any problem solving process. So now you're going after a set of questions. You could read for who, what, where, why, and how. And we could talk about that more. Um, that works with children. And you probably remember that from some of your primary grades. Um, but it doesn't go away because those are the key indicators you're looking for that paint the picture and tell the story for your brain as you're moving through uh, text in a rapid manner to find answers and solve your problem. Start with a problem. So that, that's the first place to start with a problem and then go rapidly do it. So I want to I want to go into another exercise because I, this is something that I even try with my kids and it, it was amazing. How? Give us something. How do you come up with innovative ideas? Now, this is innovation for marketing. If you're looking at a new innovative marketing, you're looking for innovation 
within your specific sphere of influence, if that's medicine, if that's family, if that's military experience, if that's post-military experience and you're looking to read jumpstart your career or something to get into take it take us through maybe a like a super quick fast way to discover innovation in under 60 seconds sure now what you're looking for are breakthroughs you're looking to see something that's in plain sight that others just aren't seeing kids are really good at this this is going to sound like an oversimplified exercise or drill but I think you'll actually surprise yourself with your own results. Let's just say you, and I, I was working with a set of uh, graduate. Level Why are you doing that? Tip your phone, tip, tip your image down. There you go. Cause we're looking up your chin now. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so I was working with a, level, a group of graduate students and one of the first exercises I did with them, which they're wondering why I did it. I pulled out a paper clip. Actually, before I pulled it out, I said, I'm going to pull out an object and I want you to come up with as many uses for this item that, as, I, as you can and write it down. And I pulled the item out and it was a paper clip. They could only come up with in 60 seconds about five or six items each. We put them all together. I think we totaled 10 unique items. I said, okay, for the second 60 seconds, now you have 100 of these items. Some of the things you can come up with. And they had a hard time, so I had to help them. Okay, for a, for a, a paper clip. You can write your name on a tree with a paper clip. You can clean your nails. You can do a lot of things with it. You can make a pen holder. Um, how about with 100 paper clips? You can make a jump rope. You can make a tire swing. You know, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, kids are really good at this. When do we lose our curiosity? When do we lose our ability to dream and to think and to create? Because believe it or not, a, there's a creativity crisis in America and actually in the world Um that we've got to bring back. And that could be another whole other discussion. Um, but you can change that by being deliberate about looking at your world um, and finding things that others don't see. Wow. And, and, I, and I think that's, that's one of the key factors that you said, being deliberate and discovering key factors that others don't see. So now this is going to segue again to, let's say, 30 plus years ago. You're somebody in upstate New York, you're a little kid trying to find your place. Why did you join the military? <laughs> well, oddly enough, um, it might, I won't say oddly enough, I guess my, my family had a history of, of being in the military. Um, it was a long time ago. We're talking the, the Korean War era. However, mm -hmm. um, 30 years ago, in the 80s, uh, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to go to college. I uh, didn't have a lot of resources to do that. Um, so I saw the military as a new opportunity, and I knew I needed some discipline. And the military provides that. And 30 years later, I couldn't have made a better decision. <laughs> so now that now that you're 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 starting a new career because now you're a retired uh, executive level and you're taking 30 years of combined information, knowledge and downloading it into the new generation of business leader, military leader, student and what have you. Um, how, how do you how do you adjust now that you're you're sort of you've moved away from getting up with Reveille, you know, every day and, and commanding like the strongest fighting force and the toughest uh, late uh, men and, and women in uniform to be able to, to take care of things. What is the adjustment factor now, now that you've been out and you're you're in civilian attire full time? Well, it, it, believe it or not, it's not that difficult because in the military, you start each day with purpose. You start each day on a mission. And you got to do the same thing, I think, in any area of life, whether you're a child, whether you're a teen, whether you're a business person, whether you're a parent. Let's just choose for a parent. I've got three kids, three kids and a wife. Um, we start each day saying, you know what? Our purpose is we want to grow them up to achieve greater things than we achieve. That means we've got to pour into them and challenge them. Would they rather play video games? Yes. But we have them read books and write and do math problems, even over the summer. I will admit, though, my wife does most of that work, and she's amazing. Um, but me and my family had a chance to go out with, uh, with Howard Berg and do dinner when he was at Fort Bragg. And, and just having someone of, of that caliber to show them what's possible is amazing. So I love doing that, pouring on to other people, say, here's what's possible. There's no such thing as a bad brain. There's only a trained brain and an untrained brain. So if you fall in one of those categories, you got to assess yourself, come up with a purpose, a mission that you're on, and uh, be very, very deliberate. I'll use that word again. Be 
deliberate about change. Develop a plan um, and, and learn. How do you learn? How do you learn rapidly in the information age? I wrote an article on LinkedIn. It's called, um, you know, your learning ability is your survivability in this information age. So if you get a chance to read that on my profile, absolutely. It's really key. But it's the ability to, to establish purpose in your life. Be very, very deliberate um, with, with your learning activities. And I, and I, I mean, I, I've been hearing that over every time we talk is be, you know, intentional, purpose driven, have a plan when you get up in the morning. Don't just say, well, what am I going to do today? You know, it's like, OK, this is, you know, we're, we're here to grow our kids. We're here to improve our marriage. We're here to, you know, create a stronger leaders, stronger mental leaders. We're looking, you know, you have a purpose every time you walk into a space, not that, hey, let's just drop yourself in this particular face and trying to figure it out as we go along. It's like, okay, I have a purpose. So therefore I have to think about that. So swinging back into the military, how did you, among all the likely candidates around the country, end up becoming both commandant of the special forces of the John F. Kennedy Special Forces School? And those guys, if you don't know what they are, just go look up special forces, totally awesome and the non-commissioned officers academy how did that happen i mean how did, how did that, i mean there are a lot of candidates qualified candidates in some of the toughest and the brightest that our nation produces how did you get picked up and i'm not saying you're not totally awesome i'm just saying what made you so unique that the command said bob burke i want him to lead this so so i just want to clarify quick. Bob burke, sorry yeah, no, no, no problem. So I just want to clarify quick. I was I only served as the commandant of the NCO Academy, which you are correct, falls underneath the Special Warfare Center and School. So I've always had a passion for leadership. Leadership is the really, if you want to boil it down to it, it's nuts and bolts. It's influence. John Maxwell says it's influence, nothing more, nothing less. And I've learned the best way to influence is through taking care of people. That's servant leadership. Now, how did I get in the position? Um, I volunteer. It's one of those tough positions that growing the next generation is not an easy task. It's a difficult task. Um, taking a step back from the operating force to go into the um, institution is, is, is a tough step. However, for family reasons, um, was one of the main things that I, I did that. However, the ability to impart knowledge, experience, mentorship, leading by example, um, and the NCO Academy was the perfect place. Now, I went from the deputy to the commandant when the actual commandant left. But I do want to highlight something. It's only by the trust that I had developed with my commanding general that he even allowed that opportunity. Mm. So I volunteered to go there, and then my merits and abilities and the strength of my team. I never want to I did anything great by myself. Remember that nothing great in this life is done alone. It always takes people and it takes a team. So we had built that great team. We passed accreditation. We were setting the standards for the army, uh, leadership development, growing our people, and even in, even academic standards were on the rise. Um, so really, I just had a great team, had a great mission, and we were deliberate every single day, determined to be better tomorrow than we are today. Wow. That, and it, I hope everybody's paying attention. If you're not, we're talking to retired Command Sergeant Major Robert Bob Burton um, here. He's based out of Raleigh, North Carolina, of course, of course, here. And he's gleaming and sharing you kind of in a very short time period, some success factors within your business, your marriage, your family, as well as coming up with innovative ways. So I want to go back a little the opposite direction uh, for for young people. And in your experience in, in, in training of young leaders, both in the, in the home as well as across, you know, as the um, executive in, in, in residence over at North Carolina State University, as well as, as training up young, um, young leaders in the military, what have you found to be uh, something that's causing, uh, I, I want to say, distraction or, or memory loss within the young people and, and, and losing their ability to, to think and to remember and quickly grasp things? What do you th in your opinion, in your experience, what, what, do you, what do you feel is that? Well, we're actually communicating on it right now, technology. Technology can be a great good. It can also be a great evil. It depends on how it's used. Now, I had a discussion just before this conversation about technology being used to solve 
PTSD type problems and issues, understanding that cognitive behavior and, and the ability to monitor stress and deal with stress um, are things that every person needs to be able to accomplish and achieve by themselves. But we all need help. Now, I, I say that this is the most digitally connected yet socially isolated generation we've ever grown in America and in this world. Because of the likes and the, um, the saturation, the dopamine release, all these things that are taking, I believe, even a generation hostage if they're not careful. And what is it? We're talking on it right now. It's a cell phone. It can be used to research and to read and listen to music and to calm, to empower and strengthen. Or it can be the greatest distraction um, in your life. Actually, I'll warn you, holding you back from your potential. It's all in how you use it. So set your mind uh, to use technology for good. Set it. We talk about superpowers and good and evil. Every choice you make, it must be deliberate. And I'm going to use technology um, to make myself better, to contribute more positively to the world. So even consider how you post in those mental states that you feel and that you create in others. Uh, but use technology and wield it wisely. So so touching on that, what are some some tips that – and I remember you said something about having certain um, – like a phone or something in your room or near you or having that ability. Um, talk us through that component. That's interesting. I know what you're talking about. I believe it was Stanford University did a study that said even just having your cell phone in the room with your IQ decreases by 10 points. It just sounds too good to be real, but it's real. Because I say this, when Google went from a noun to a verb, we were in trouble. Most people may not even remember this generation grew up, has grown up with Google, and that they, they've known it. They have Chromebooks in their classrooms. They communicate on Google you know, cloud servers and Google Classroom. Um, but Google's a company. It's a company. Um, but we Google everything. So we've outsourced our very thinking ability, our ability to – remember, our thinking ability and learning ability is our survivability. But we've outsourced it to a device, outsourced it to a computer, to a browser. The ability to walk into a – a uh, library and use the Dewey Decimal System even just to find a book, I think would bewilder most people under the sound of my voice right now. Um, so I, I challenge yourself to, to put down the technology, get into a book, go to a faraway land, imagine, feel, and sense, and activate different parts of your brain that, that a digital device is not going to uh, because it can be a good or it can be you know, and evil, depending on how it's used. And, and I wanted to use a, a practical example that this happened with a young, a young person. And, and, and I remember, and this is two, two quick stories. One is I remember when I used to remember a lot of telephone numbers, you know, like when, when, it, you know, I could probably in, in that time, remember over probably, I would say probably 30 good numbers. I can re recall, you know, this number, that number, telephone numbers, my mom's number, my grandmother, and everybody's number. That's down to probably comfortably six numbers because of brain, you know, I want to say brain laziness. But I remember a young person who was installing, um, they were rebuilding my computer because there was something wrong with the hard drive. It was an interesting example because problem solving, and you've kind of talked about it, touched on that, was – I, he 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 wanted to put some, but there was there was actually a piece of metal that was sticking out, and it would not go in correctly. And so for him, I was and I looked at him kind of like, okay, that's a fairly simple solution. So he went online to find the part to do all this stuff to get the exact part because he had a generic piece of of basically a frame. He had a generic piece of frame, and I looked at him kind of like, are you going to figure this out? And he didn't. He never figured it out. And so I just took a pair of pliers, grabbed a piece of metal, bent it out a little, and voila, it fit perfectly. So, so being able to think through a very simple process like that could be crucial. Could be, you know, being able to be innovative. So, moving into the innovative space, how can you help leaders be more innovative with their thinking, with their marketing, with their how they communicate? How they make relationship? How do you how do you train the the brain, if you will, 
to always love innovation and look for innovation. So great, great points uh, all. And to train the brain to look for innovation is be curious, be curious, actually take out some paper and just draw, just sketch, consider the problem that you're trying to solve. And just, I mean, I watch my daughter draw and she's amazing. I watch my kids just do things and it's like, wow. And it just, it sets me back. So think like a kid sometimes um, when we get a little bit mature and a little bit stuffy sometimes, but just think and daydream just a little bit. Think of what is possible. That's the creative model. You've actually got that. I'll give you two questions you can ask yourself that will actually help you to create and come up with new opportunities, new options that maybe you hadn't thought of before. One question is, what are all the ways I might? The second question is, how might I? As you're trying to be innovative, innovation is something that you do. Creativity is something that you do. We've been that you're either creative or you're not creative. You're this or you're that. Don't let anyone lay you. You choose your own potential. It starts with a decision. I'm going to be creative. I'm going to be a good artist. Even if I can just draw stick people today, tomorrow with practice. And it's just having a commitment to become better. I recommend this. Hang around with the type of people you want to become. You want to be rich? Hang out with rich people. You want to be innovative? Hang out with other innovators, especially in the North Carolina area and Raleigh. And, and I, I talked with, with someone here recently. They're building some biomedical devices um, at Duke University to help people to solve terrible health problems, right? We've had discussions about how do you bring health care to rural locations. Just start with a problem, come up with new ideas, new opportunities, and then make those a reality. There's people out there, but you got to have a vision. You got to have a dream. And I'll challenge you to do this. Communicate that vision. Communicate that dream. And there's someone out there help you but don't do it get around the type of people um who can help you achieve great things and, and i think i i want to i wanna, I, I think that that is so important because you, you you touched on it and it was two parts earlier when you were looking to uh assimilate more information more you know be able to read so you reached out to someone who could help you you had a problem you wanted to be able to do it faster so you you didn't go and it was two parts to this because you didn't go to the second string you didn't go to the the guy who maybe or the, the gal who may be a little faster you didn't yeah. go to somebody who may be able to read just just two times faster. you literally contact the fastest reader in the world and said can you teach me i want to hang around you and and so it, it was it was you had a problem you had an objective you reached for somebody you hung around that person who you were to help you. And then, and it sounds like you continue to stew yourself, be it at on the academic campus or moving back onto the military um, uh, campus or in your local community grade school campus. It seems like wherever there are people who, who, who and I see you and I, and I remember reading as a change agent, somebody who comes in, sees, sees a problem and said, who can we bring together and to be able to solve this problem and use innovation and just taking ideas that seem mundane to mundane ideas and put them together in something and create something brilliant. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> right. No, absolutely. And I like your point. You know, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to learn? How bad do you want to be? You got to work because just getting up day after day, putting in the hours, the effort, hours i get up early every morning probably about five o'clock you gotta spend some time for you if you're spending all your time you know with tv and devices and and friends and all those things are good but you gotta spend some time and develop yourself commit some time to growing yourself and, and, and nick i'll tell you it, when i work with different folks I, I just see their potential before they see it i tell folks i'm a locksmith so what do you mean a locksmith? It's my job is to get to know you. I learned this as a leader. To, to understand your individual approach, how you see the world, your personal culture, core values, and all those things, and then help you to discover your world. With that, that comes the key to unlock your potential. So I see the potential in people before they see it. Um, and I think we have that same opportunity to, to 
speak into the lives of people every single day. It's not about us. If we approach the world, it's not about me. How can I learn something that I can teach it? So I, I'll tell you this. I learn to teach. I learn so that I can teach. And there's actually a really neat mechanism called the finding technique that if you can learn something so well that you can teach it, you actually understand it better. And then when you teach it to someone, that's why you want to be a mentor. Have a mentor, be a mentor. You now get to learn it again because you're articulating. Just like I have an opportunity to speak now. I'm learning again every time, every question you're asking me because I'm forced to think. Thinking is a good thing. Make time for it every day. I agree. So I want to uh, I want to change and, and and slow it down just a little for two two to three final questions. This is a little bit more personal um, with your family because we covered family just a little bit broadly. But I wanted to say, you know, with your kids, I, there there's somebody just poked. <laughs> oh, hello, that's one of the kids. <laughs> okay, hello. <laughs> okay, so as a parent, as a dad, what what sort of freaks you out? I mean, you, you've been in some pretty tough zones. You've been in combat zone in, in the Pacific, in Asia, in, in the Middle East. I mean, you've been a lot of places. And you've been in some tough places that I suspect a lot of people can't even find on the map. When it comes to being a dad now, what kind of kind of make you feel like, man, I'm a little scared. And that's that's a whole different process altogether. What sort of freaks you out when you're, when you're kind of looking at your kids? Well, that we talked about distraction a little bit that they would get distracted. I think parents have a unique opportunity to help their kids to see a future that they make possible. We can't force our dream and our ambitions on our kids, but we can help them to discover their own ambition. Um, but if, if they get distracted from their purpose, everyone has a unique purpose. That's where your giftings and your calling and your strength come from. They're all tied to your purpose. Find your purpose. So my, my biggest fear, I guess, would be that um, that they don't discover that purpose. That purpose is what gets you out of bed in the morning. My purpose is so great. I, I, I almost don't sleep because my purpose is to, is to change the world, is to help people. You'll find on my LinkedIn profile that others may accept. It. Remember, it's not about you. So to be more precise about the question, again, that maybe they would lose their purpose at some point in life. Um and then from there, you become a wandering generality instead of a meaningful specific. Be a meaningful specific every day. I love that. Be a be meaningful specific. So, and this is the, the, the missus on your side, who's I'm sure somewhere in the background. <laughs> How do you and your wife share special moments together? This is a little more, you know, the, 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 the husband wife time. How do you guys share? I mean, may, you know, the kids have gone to sleep or the kids are, you know, somewhere else. How do you guys, you know, maintain that strong bond together as as two separate individuals, but now as a as a couple and then raising three children? I mean, how do you guys, you know, create that? Yeah, you know, and, and I'll give you just a, a real life example. Um, is is be vulnerable? Oh man, be vulnerable. You know, as a leader, this goes, and I don't I don't do leadership trial because because a very specific question about my, about my spouse, but be vulnerable. Um, it's powerful. I, I was vulnerable, brought some things to her where I didn't feel like I was succeeding. She provided just the right encouragement that I needed, and I'm still here for it. So everyone has their moment. So just be real. Be real with yourself. Be real with others. And uh, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Be transparent. How do you be transparent? You just got to share things. You just got to communicate. You got to get things, get past yourself. You've heard me say that multiple times. Our self stands in our way, our own way of our greatest potential, our greatest progress. Um, so just be be vulnerable. It takes a lot of self-searching. takes being comfortable with who you are. But it all stems from a greater purpose, knowing that you've got to accomplish something that only you can achieve. And with that comes a hunger, a passion, and renewed energy and strength. And then share that with others. When I get to share that with my spouse. Well, thank you very much. Now, in, in closing, just to just to wrap it up, if someone wants to, you know, connect with you to, you know, find you as a mentor, as a teacher, as a change agent within their business or in their industry, or maybe they're going into service, or maybe they're transitioning out of service. And again, they're, you know, if you're in medicine, law, or whatever, and you're looking for someone to be able to to work with, to guide you, to mentor you. Um, how do they, how do they reach out with you, to you? 
Sure, sure. Yeah, no, and I, I would love that because um, I, I do make myself available. Uh, just Robert Burton, you'll you'll find me. I don't think there's too many of me in LinkedIn. LinkedIn's the easiest place. I I, I post some content, got some articles. I actually have a shared leadership notebook for Evernote. So there's a lot, a lot of content. Um, but again, yeah, I, I would love to reach out if you, you just want to talk, uh, any assistance, uh, if I can provide some insights, some nuggets, if I can help you with speed reading. Um, it's a skill that you can achieve. One, you got to want to do it. Um, and then two, you need the tools. Uh, and that's all I do. I tell folks as a locksmith, what's a locksmith? They, they solve your problem. You need to open a lock. My job is to help you achieve your potential. Well, thank you for helping me as well as all the viewers in on this space to be able to unlock their potential in this small time period. And I appreciate what you what you did for the 30 plus years and what you continue to do as and, and I know sometimes as as you know, veterans, we tend to, you know, we, we hear a lot of things. And I think one of the strongest things and we, we sometimes don't think about that. One of the strongest things I believe in, one of the greatest position that we have is husband and father. And, and we sort of diminish that because we think, you know, I'm an CEO, I'm an executive, I'm, you know, I'm teaching the warfighter, you know, I have security clearance, you know, I have a, I have a resume a mile long that has all kinds of, you know, uh, positions that people would love to assail to. But being a father and being a husband and being able to help not only your children, but the children that your children will marry down the road, possibly, and, and to be active in the community and not just sit back and wait for it to come and seek out those allies and those partners who can help you um, to succeed in your mission and to help them to unlock so that they can succeed in their mission and their purpose of being on this planet as opposed to wandering you know, tr you know, kind of, I don't know exactly what I should do today. <laughs> kind of. You, you know what, if I, if I could just make kind of a final comment on that, um, you're, you're exactly right. And I love that. Um, outreach. You really want to find yourself, get out of your own way, get out of yourself. How do you do that? Volunteer, help someone, mentor someone and, and serve people. That's the greatest gift that you can give humanity, I believe, is to serve your gift to them. Don't go around charging, how much can I get for this? You didn't have heard me talk about money one time. It's not about, about giving a gift. And if I'm giving a gift, the amazing part is it's not for me, it's for you. So I, I've been reaching out to local veteran organizations here in the, in the Raleigh area and just trying to team up, like you said, build those alliances. Why? So I can give. Not so I can get. Why do they do what they do? So they can give. So just be a giver. And uh, it's just amazing what comes into your life, what comes back to you when you give. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Again, I, hopefully I've had a, a few nuggets, a few tidbits of information. Um, but, yeah, definitely read, read the, got an article on LinkedIn. I think it will really help out, gives you a strategy. Um, and uh, actually, my mentor, Howard Berg, his information is in there, too, if you want to reach out to him. Um, he's such an amazing guy. He's so friendly. And uh, he would love to hear from you. So, but reach out to me as well, and because uh, I want to give you. Well, thank you again, uh, Bob, for being here, for taking time away from your family, for, for downloading the information that you've acquired and learned and continue to process throughout the day. And I want to thank you, the honored guests who've been here today, to take time to be able to use the wisdom, the knowledge, and the tools to be able to impact your life, to solve complex situations, make, simplifying them, and in being able to, to find your purpose, to discover your purpose. And if you're not sure yet, reaching out to the people can help you to discover that because, you know, serving others, volunteering, and as Bob had alluded to, you know, that's the key. To be, come out, come out to serve and your your way will be found. Okay. Don't don't get all stressed and weird about that. So thank you very much. If you need more information, if you're looking for, just contact Bob. And if you have other information, you know, or other questions you'd like to reach out to me, I'm on LinkedIn, Face, Facebook, Instagram, and a whole bunch of other places that I probably shouldn't be after listening to Bob tonight. Um, um, you can reach out to Nikkei Roach and I look forward to talking with you. And hopefully we can, you know, create amazing things together, taking people from all across the globe to be able to use innovation, impactful, purposeful, with our talents and our abilities. Thank you for joining us today and safe travels wherever you are. All right. Thank you, my friend.